you see from DeVito, who's you know was a practice squad guy up until five weeks ago? Yeah. Um, you know, he if you if you really go back, um, I guess the Jets was the was that the first time he, yeah, he came in? From minus one. Yeah. Um, and then obviously in the Raider game, you know, when, you know, the Jet game and the Raider game, when the two starters got hurt, he came in. Um, you know, it's kind of a tale of two different, two different guys. Um, I know as of late, you know, the last, you know, he played fairly well. Um, and the fact that, you know, he found a way to win games in, in versus Washington versus uh, New England. So, um, but just, you know, this league is crazy, you know. You got to you got to come to work every single day and and prepare. And you know, I tell you guys all the time, you know, you have starters and you have starters in waiting. And um, we preach it all the time. Those guys take advantage of their opportunities. And um, this kid's he's done some good things. Uh, he's battled. He's fought. He's just found ways to win games. At least the last two weeks. Um, d defensively, you're obviously playing pretty well. I mean, you look at your, you look at your week one secondary. You know, Jair's been out a bunch. Yeah. Sewell's been traded. I mean, you know the whole whole thing. How have you how have you kept it together with all your backups in waiting, playing a lot of snaps? We're starters in waiting now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The starters are the ones who are backups in waiting when they get promoted, right? Oh, uh, thanks, Bill. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you just gotta. It's it's a uh, the NFL. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint you know, the season. And, um, you know, you just got to, you got to find a way. And, uh, and, and, and the guys have, of, of course, you know, I, I think we're close, you know. Um, we, we had some guys obviously practice today, which was good to see. Um, you know, so we'll, as I tell you, today was a Thursday in our progression. So, you know, hopefully when we wake up tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's our, our Friday. Um, Hopefully they have another good day. So, but yeah, it's just you know, we coach the heck out of whoever's healthy and ready to go, and um, hopefully those guys that do play continue to take advantage of their opportunities. Joe, what do you think is the best statistical measure of how a defense is playing? Is there one like Dom Capers used to say? Opponent quarterback rating was yeah. one that he really liked. Now it doesn't take into account the run game, but well, I mean, I, I think you you can spend statistics a many you know, a thousand different ways. Um, to, to me, the, the, the biggest statistic, the biggest stat is the frickin' scoreboard when the, when the clock hits zero, you know. Um, you know, but of course, you know, I, I think, you know, Rob, the this, this, this situational statistics I think are huge, you know, red zone, third down. Um, you know, I, I think obviously, um, you know, everyone talks about, you know, you got to stop the run. You got to win on third down. You got to, you know, win in the red zone. Um, but then you could say two minute. You know, two minutes. Two minutes huge. So, you know, I, I think statistics are are obviously very very important. It's how we're measured. Um, but the number one stat in football is at the end of the game they have one less point than you have. So that that's the most important. You're, I think you guys are eighth or ninth in points right now. So. Yeah. So. Um, but all, all those things are, are things we stress, things we talk about. Um, you know, the, the, the stats that matter are, are the ones that are huge. So your pass rush in the red zone has really gotten home, though. Are you dialing up just with the winnable matchups are hitting? Or? Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we like to, you know, every week we go into, in, in there with a plan to be able to be multiple and do different things, whether we rush four, or five, six. Um, you know, we have that ability to do that every single week. Um, the nice thing last week is that we were able to play coverage and rush four. And, um, you know, which I think anybody will tell you, when you can deploy seven people in coverage and rush four and, and consistently win, um, that's, that's, that's the best thing. But um, every single week we have the ability to bring, like I said, four, five, six, even if, you know, we have the ability on the, on the call sheet every week to bring seven if we need to. 
Yeah, we've seen it with uh, Jair over the years, and we're seeing it Did with Rich. Did Rich make you wear that t-shirt? No, so it was Rich that. gave it to me, so I chose to wear it today because we just had a big we. move the other day. <laughs> yeah, That's sorry. Right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back to football. So if I bring you a t-shirt next week, you'll wear it? Well, what t-shirt would it be? I don't know. We'll see. Right. As long as it's not a Miami. Sorry, I just noticed that. You're fine. All right. Um, as long as it's not a Miami or Ohio t-shirt. Hey. Come on, Red I don't Hawks, know. I went to Ohio. Can I ask my question, please? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I just know your son. Focus. Really Sorry, that. Sarah's Sarah's on the clock. So we've seen it with Jair over the years, where you know he's confident because he has to be, and it and it almost borders on a little bit of delusion. And and at corner, you, maybe you have to be like that. Carrington comes in the locker room and says, "That wasn't pass interference. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't have to say it. I think it obviously blatantly was. Do you see that he has the right mentality to to kind of be a, a shutdown corner in this league?" Yeah, I mean, uh, I think confidence is 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 huge. It's a it's a huge weapon that you can use. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's a player in the National Football League in any locker room that isn't confident. Um, and whether you call it o overconfident, you know, whatever, um, I think you got to have a mindset when you, especially when you cross that white line and you go onto that field. Um, and it's 11 versus 11, and you specifically, it's one-on-one. -on -one. You better have a confident, you know, swag, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think you got you got to have that. And um, I think young kids obviously kind of naturally are just kind of are, are, are that way. Um, but, you know, I don't want to – the, the thing that Carrington's done, and he's – He's still a very young player. He's got, you know, he's got a, a million miles still to go. Um, but I love to see a kid, you know, at eight o'clock at night when we're here, and I leave my office to walk down to the cafeteria to get something. I hear music in the in the DB room, and I open the door, and there's, you know, CB and Anthony Johnson in there at eight o'clock at night watching tape, you know. So I, I think those things impress me those, those are the things that you guys really don't see the, out, the outside world doesn't see um, you know I think the the swagger and the confidence and all that stuff that that's cool but um, the, the work and the daily improvement that I see especially with young guys like that or I keep saying that are getting opportunities and taking advantage of it that's the thing that I'm, I'm most proud of when you see guys like that hey Joe, um, you've been in this league a long time now Jair said something today to us that I, I, I just want to read you the quote so you know exactly what he said. Um, Jair, Jair said this. Jair time. said this to us. He said, I'm the type of person that I always want to put my best foot forward. So if I feel like I can't put my best foot forward, then it's just tough to even be out there. I'm curious, as you've seen this game evolve, there was a time when, I mean, I remember Marco Rivera going out and he tore his MCL the week before and he played, right? And yeah. Is it different now? Is, is, is it just, I'm, I'm sure it's case by case, but with the way the league has evolved, is it is it less common that guys are taking significant injury risks when they're playing through injury? Do you think that's changed? You know, I, I think you got to, it's obviously, it's a, it's a case by case individual uh, every every single thing's different, but you know I know. You know I know Rashawn Gary came back from an ACL, at, you know when when no one thought he would. Uh, you know, right at about nine months. You know I, I thought that that was one of the most impressive things that I've seen. Um, you know I can't remember if I shared this with you guys. Um, we're in Detroit on Wednesday night before the Thursday night game. And, you know, Devondre Campbell can barely lift his arm. And he's got, you know, a masseuse meeting him down in the lobby, you know, an hour before bed check to do some extra work on his neck just so he can, you know, potentially have the, the ability to play at 1230 the next day. So, um, yeah, I, I think these guys that we're talking about, when I say these guys, these players, these, these are the, I've told you before, they are the they are the the definition of competitor, and um, there's not a I, I don't believe that there's not a, a guy in that meet in that locker room that when he is dinged and does have an injury, he's doing everything humanly possible to get back out on the grass to be able to go play, 
Um, not a doubt in my mind with that. So I know you didn't directly, but with David Long in LA, yeah. do you remember what your first impressions were of him? Just as far as just having a little bit of back history yeah. with you, how that helps him? Yeah, I was with him for two years. We drafted him, uh, I think we drafted him in 19. Um, he came in and um, first off, is a if you talk, great kid. Um, was an L.A. kid that actually went to Michigan and uh, came back to L.A. So it was a pretty cool story for him and his family. Um, I think David's from Pasadena specifically. But um, great kid, um, can play outside, can also play nickel, can play inside. Um, so I, I think he, he's got great system familiarity, um, not only with – being at the Rams, but then you know we got him from Carolina, and Ejero Evero was our was our safeties coach um, during that time when we were in LA. So um, he's running a similar system in Carolina. So I think it's any time, especially it, it's hard for a player when you get signed, whatever week this is, you know, to come in and have to learn new verbiage and you know ner new terminology. Um, I think it's it's even though David spent some time with the Raiders, that wasn't you know, system similarity, but um, when he comes in here and, you know, he can say, oh, yeah, that's what we used to call it in L.A., or, yeah, that's what they still call it in Carolina. Um, it helps a player when he comes in and has some has some system familiarity, but um, great kid, and I'm, I'm glad we got him. So, um, was that a personnel department decision, or were you starting to get a little worried about your depth at corner at all? Yeah, I mean that that's the one thing that uh, you know, at least in the in the seat that I'm in, um, you know, Goody and his staff, they they do a phenomenal job of being able to kind of just scour what's out there um, and being able to get guys. Um, I want to say David was whenever he got released from the Raiders. Um, I know there was there was some you know that's a guy that we've kind of coveted that we've kept an eye on and it was uh we missed out when when he went to carolina but we're able to get him this time so um goody and those guys do a great job and of course in a situation like that you know goody will say hey you know what do you think of this kid how, how was your time with him um of course and uh yeah i, I had nothing but great things to say about david long great kid and i'm glad we got him on the play where uh, Jared Goff loses control of the ball and J.O. scoops and scores. Yeah. On your defensive line, it's Preston, Quay, Wooden, Kenny, and Rashawn who gets pressure out there. Yeah. It's, that looks like a kind of exotic line. And in that situation, deep in their territory, right, were you thinking pass rush? But what is with, with that assortment of players? Yeah, I mean, we, we, had, a, we had a five man pressure called on that play. Uh, and they actually did a pretty good job of, of turning the line and picking up Quay, who was rushing. Um, but it gave us a one-on-one -on -one with Kenny Clark and Rashawn on the defensive right side. And uh, both Kenny and Rashawn had a great rush. Uh, Kenny won, Jared stepped up, and then Rashawn was able to stay alive and, and get the sack fumble. So, um, yeah, it was it was. Some of those things happen sometimes when you call a pressure and they, they have the perfect protection to pick up the pressure, but then you got an offensive left tackle and a left guard that are having one-on-one -on -one blocks on two pretty good pass rushers and, and Kenny and Rashawn, and they both won. So does it look like that or confuse an offensive line like, oh, we haven't seen this one? Well, well hopefully. You know, that, that's, that's, the, that's the hope that you have. Um, I don't think that was necessarily a, a, um, a situation where we really – caught him in something and they were confused. Um, it was just um, two guys taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one blocks and winning one-on-one. -on -one. Joe, I know you weren't here for uh, Rashawn's rookie year, but you know he was behind Zedarius and Preston and yeah. didn't get a lot of opportunities. What do you think of what Lucas has given you and how he has kind of developed? He was key on that punt, that fake punt in Detroit. He had the sack last week. Yeah. Um, he's, I think he's taken up a lot of first and second down snaps for you yeah. against him. What do you kind of make of his rookie year so far? Yeah, right. you know, I, I think that, and that's the, I don't think you're going this way, but, um, you know, it's hard to, every single guy is different. Every single guy is unique in his own kind of journey. And uh, 
you know, rookies are, some guys come in and, you know, they have unbelievable rookie years. Some guys, it takes some time, you know. Um, I think Lucas is, his progression, and you, you got you to gotta remember, I, I think Lucas is the one, I think he, he had a birthday, right? I think he turned 21, like when we went to training camp, you know. So, um, you know, Lucas really should be getting ready for a bowl game at Iowa right now in the, in the grand scheme of things, the natural progression. Um, but I, I think he's, I tell you the one thing, he is a, uh, he is a grinder, he is a worker, and um, he comes in, you know, a lunch pail guy every single day, you know exactly what you're going to get. Um, and I, I think he's, he's naturally um, stacking blocks, you know, as I call it, every single week, you want to, you want to, you want to be better than the previous week. So um, was happy for him last week, he got that big sack. Um, you know, he's got the new, you know, I don't, I don't know where he got that, but he's, uh, he's got the new sack pose or whatever you call it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think the progression and the course that Lucas is on is, is good right now.